Hanukkah Hamster, written by Michelle Markle, and illustrated by Andre Siolin. December had come to the city. Decorations glittered on the rooftops and windows. People rushed in and out of stores to buy gifts for the holidays. All day long, Edgar drove them in his cab. At the end of his shift, he was so tired. He climbed into the back seat of his cab and took a little nap. Oof! Something scrambled onto his chest. Eey! Something was hairy, brushed his face. Was it a dream? No, it was a hamster. Edgar scooped it up. The hamster settled into his hand. His feet were so pink and tiny. Two beady black eyes blinked. Edgar stroked the hamster's back, then set it in his lunch bag. He wondered who'd left the hamster in the cab. But so many customers have gotten in and out. Edgar phoned in a report to Lost and Found at the cab company. At his apartment, using a cardboard box and shredded paper, Edgar made a home for the hamster. There you go. He said the Hanukkah blessings, and while the night stars watched, he lit two candles on the menorah. The next day, Edgar drove more people on their holiday errands. He got a message from the lost and found saying that nobody had called about a lost hamster. The night after lighting the three candles, Edgar made chopped salad, the kind he used to eat back home, and he minced a tiny one for the hamster. You and me again. Edgar looked at the cucumbers and chickpeas on his plate. Then he watched the hamster nibble on its own salad. Okay if I call you chickpea. The following night, Edgar stopped at the lost and found desk. Has anybody called about the hamster? The manager shook her head. Edgar looked at the hamster supplies at the pet shop. He counted the tip money in his pockets. Enough for a nice wheel. I really shouldn't, Edgar thought. So instead, he just bought food. When he got home, he said the blessings and lit four candles. Chickpea got into the bowl with his hamster food. He did a black flip. Was that a little smile? Edgar took a picture on his phone and shared them with his family in Israel. Day five of Hanukkah dawned cold and brisk. Throughout his shift, Edgar checked for messages, but no one had claimed the hamster. That night, he made a slide out of a cardboard tube. Chickpea whooshed down it. His nose twitched. On day six and seven of Hanukkah, Edgar had a sinking feeling. Someone might be missing the little hamster. Someone might be about to call. While the Hanukkah candles burned down, Edgar told Chickpea about Tel Aviv, about the outdoor cafes, the palm trees, the warm breezes. He petted him on his back stripe, and the hamster fell asleep. The next morning, Edgar drove a customer to the outskirts of town. When he stopped the cab, the house looked familiar. So did a woman standing in front of one of them with a boy. She was a woman he'd driven a few days ago, and that must be her son. 
Edgar felt a punch in his heart. He made himself wave and rolled down the window. Little boy, he called. Did you lose your hamster? That hamster, the boy cried. I bought him for my classroom, the woman said. He disappeared the same day. She looked closely at Edgar. But I didn't think he escaped during the cab ride. We thought he was hiding in the bedding, the boy said. Then we saw the cage door was loose. Edgar showed them pictures on his phone. I've been calling him Chickpea. Here he is eating salad, his favorite food. Here he is going down the slide. Look at his black stripe. He loves it when you pet him there. The woman squinted down at one of the photos. Do I see a menorah? Yes, said Edgar. Me and the hamster, we've been celebrating Hanukkah together. You and the hamster, the woman said. Do you have any family here? No, they're back in Israel. So you live by yourself? Edgar nodded. Oh, it was very kind of you to take care of the hamster and to let us know. No trouble at all, Edgar said. You picked out a good one. He took a deep breath. So I have to return him to you tomorrow before work. I, I can... The boy touched his mother's arm and the two of them exchanged glances. I think this hamster belongs with you, the woman said to Edgar. He looks right at home. She reached out to shake his hand and wished him a wonderful holiday. That evening, while the stars shone above the kitchen window, Edgar said the blessing and lit all the candles on the menorah. He set out a donut for himself and a new wheel for his friend. Happy Hanukkah, Chickpea! Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. Want to check out the last story we read? Here's the link. Do you have a favorite book you want read aloud? Just leave it in the comments below.